Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we're talking about a pretty interesting argument and debate that has broken out on Twitter over the last few days regarding how iRacing's World Championships would be affected by a switch to using fixed setups. Malik Ray, the popular iRacing Twitch streamer and now two times oval pro driver, tweeted out that he hopes one day iRacing makes the Road to Pro and Pro Series fixed setups. He suggested that the World Championship will never have the best 40 drivers if setups continue to be open for this qualification series. Malik is certainly a driver with a large voice in the NASCAR Oval community, so this got quite a bit of discussion. Whether we all agree or not with these statements doesn't particularly matter to me, but people who are out there trying to improve the product by thinking about stuff we can change are great for the sport in the long term. Malik didn't explicitly state that he wanted the Coke series to go fix setups as well, but many in the comments believed it should be as well. One of the arguments for this case is that not everybody has the same amount of time in a week to design setups for each race. By making it fixed, you end up not having a large disparity in people with highly optimized setups and those that only have marginally modified setups. As a result of this further, there wouldn't be as big of a field spread in the series, and the results would be further in the hands of the drivers, rather than the engineers. My point of view on the matter is that World Championships in any sim racing title should be open set up with everything available to change. These aren't regular officials for anybody on the site to just jump in and have fun in. This is supposed to be the absolute top level of sim racing and there are big prizes on the line and as such, it should be hard to obtain the top spot on the leaderboard and trying to engineer an advantage is just a part of the game. I've competed in two world championships on iRacing so far, one in road and one in dirt road and with the number of hours all the drivers put into these particular events, I've seen the VRS telemetry, I don't believe that closing off setups would change the results at all. I put in a crazy amount of time for round one of the IRX world championship this year for example and I'm fairly convinced that I had the most optimized setup on the entire grid, that's just how much time I spent on it. But was I the fastest driver out there? No, I wasn't. There were plenty of other drivers that round who had the pace on me. Setups don't drive the car, drivers do. Regardless of whether setups are fixed or not, a good driver is always able to rise to the top. Changing a world championship to fixed is not suddenly going to put Josh Rogers outside the top 20. I was interested to know just how many people shared my perspective on the matter though, so I made a tweet myself and asked the community what their thoughts were on if other series all moved to fixed setups as well, including the Tag Heuer Porsche Esports Super Cup, the upcoming Dallara IR01 WCS, Word of Outlaws, IRX, you name it. The response was actually more split than I expected. Connor Parisi, a three-time iRacing World Championship competitor, echoed my thoughts that the same people will win anyways, and that preparation beats setups. Yuri Kazdorp, a driver for Roman Grosjean's esports team and is very successful on both iRacing and R Factor 2, said that when a lot of speed can be found in the setups, especially when it's not obvious, it destroys the competition, but also completely fixed setups are just frustrating. We had seen this before in the final years of the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix series where VRS Coanda Simsport found something in the setup that even Martin Kronke himself was quoted as saying that he would have never found this setup trick out himself by using real world logic. It was a change to the car that was so obscure, something you would never do in the real world and certainly something that even the telemetry suggested was wrong, but it turns the car up to another level. Many of their competitors that year didn't find the trick out, and as such, Kawanda went on a very dominant run of results. Martin Kronke, Mitchell De Jong, Mac Backham. One, two, three in the championship. Dominant today by Kawanda. George Simmons compared it to saying that Formula One should be a spec series. It's racing at a world championship level, and that being the best driver should include having the skill set to set up the car. GoPro Lopez, as he is often known, was all for fixed setups in World Championship competition. Less time wasted clicking virtual parameters, more time spent focusing on the driving, and that's it. Kuba Brzezinski wanted the setups to be mostly fixed, but still open enough so that drivers could tailor the balance to their preferred driving style. 
And this is a big point because fix setups are not as balanced or even as many people think. If a fix setup is naturally oversteery, then drivers whose style suits an understeering car are screwed. In contrast, drivers who like an oversteering car are going to be very happy with it. Pro drivers should be adaptable to a car's balance, but at the end of the day, some drivers being unhappy with a car balance while another half are happy, it's just not the fairest situation out there. While I hope that the World Championships on all platforms never go to a fixed setup, if they were to head into that direction, I believe that there should still be minor parameters available to be changed purely for driving preference, rather than outright lap time. The topic did get the attention of Tyler Hudson, who is heavily involved behind the scenes of just about every single World Championship on iRacing. Tyler spoke on behalf of iRacing to say there were no plans to ever make Road to Pro, Pro or the eNASCAR Coca-Cola series fix setup. This is the top of the mountain. It should encompass everything that Sim has to offer, including custom setups, working with teammates to build setups, positioning yourself to be on good teams, etc. This is a very real aspect of Sim racing. I don't think we should take that away any time soon. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the video for today, and I cannot wait to read the comments on this discussion. It's going to be an interesting one with, I'm sure, many different opinions. So let's keep it civil. Let's keep it friendly. Let's keep it awesome, guys. And thank you so much for the support. I'm Bo Elbert, and I'll see you all in the next video.